xin mời, mời đại chúng mình thở cùng nhau cho thoải mái xong rồi let's uh, breathe together come back to ourselves and really enjoy our simple breathing enjoy this uh, beautiful uh, space together Nam mô Shakyamuni Buddhaya. The respected teacher, the noble community, the Mahasangha, a little bit everywhere. Today uh, is just about the right before our opening of a winter retreat. After the Dharma talk, we will have a, a, our regular face-to-face, uh, opening the Rains Retreat Ceremony. And that is to begin our three months of dwelling peacefully together. In Vietnamese, called An Cư. It sounds so beautiful, An Cư. Somehow, uh, in English, is peacefully dwelling, uh, peacefully dwelling in three months. And that's been our tradition since I've ever can remember entering the Plum Village tradition. So today's, today's Dharma talk um, is centered around that, how we can anchor anywhere we go, how to dwell peacefully, any place, any time. So it's not just three months, and especially in troubled times, in times of need, in times of uncertainty and anxiety, so our teacher has uh, had the wisdom to reestablish this tradition uh, since the time of the Buddha. The monks had always uh, returned because they, their life is to serve and to uh, go about the city to uh, beg for food and to share the Dharma throughout the year. So in the rainy season in India, they all come back. And more and more, I think maybe it wasn't first three months, and it's really, it just added on because they wanted to deepen their practice. So this is a tradition that our teacher, Thay, has uh, revived and uh, how make it sacred that we are not, uh, we should uh, maintain this tradition and cherish it and protect it for our spiritual development. For the monks and nuns, uh, we count our monastic life, our year in the Dharma, based on how many three months rains retreat we have attended. So if you miss 
a rain suit tree, then you actually uh, you don't get one more year. <laughs> so it's like uh, going to college and you don't go to class. You know, is uh, even though one year passed, you have not grown and developed. So just a little, little bit in for you to know our tradition. And uh, mm, I shared this morning, uh, been reflecting on what does that have to do with our life now, our situation of our planet and for the human species, and especially for America a very, uh, very chaotic uh, year. Uh, chaotic year for uh, many uh, continents, but especially in America, because it's, a, how do you call it, election year. And I believe in two days, yeah, they were, they were, the brothers and sisters who invited me uh, to give this talk is my, uh, I have to pay debt to Deer Park right away. <laughs> uh, so I, I share because they, they, they told me they're, uh, they're kind of nervous about sharing two days before the election. They not, might say something, uh, uh, what is it, un-PC and upset the uh, different parties in our Sangha. And we have many um, backgrounds in our Sangha and they all take refuge in the Sangha and in the practice. But they all have different political views. So. It's kind of a, a, a challenge to actually share in a way that can benefit all, no matter what party, what views, what color uh, you are from. And that is, uh, uh, you know, this is the reason why we are brown and we shave our head. We uh, try our best to become uh, a political and a cultural, a party, a race, a, uh, is a, when we shave our head, is to remind us we don't belong to any group, any party, any um, religion, any, well, kind of Buddhist, yeah. But uh, we try best to <laughs> not to. Some of our brothers are Christian. Some of them, we even had Muslim a brother still practice uh, Ramana. So it's a matter of uh, um, touching the best of humanity in each of us. We call it the bodhicitta, right? The bodhi mind, the mind of awakening. That is the foremost important. So today I would like to share in the context of um, Anku, of peacefully dwelling. And I think some of you already are experiencing of that uh, in, uh, what is it, quarantine, isolation, uh, living, um, reducing your movement and social uh, contact. So there's already some aspect. Today I'd like to share about a way of uh, uh, dwelling peacefully in our true home and how that um, can be an answer for our current situation. There's a lot of anxiety, a lot of uh, um, how do you call it? A lot of fear, a lot of mm, separation. And this is uh, very important for us as practitioner mm, to know how to come back to ourselves and look deeply at what we can rely on. So today is the, mm, mm, we can learn when we come back three months, the monks and nuns practitioner, we have to reflect on what can we rely on to take refuge in. And when we come together, we have the Sangha, we have each other, and we have the practice as well. So this is something mm, for all of us uh, to look at because we, our life, um, monastic to serve, it brings us a lot of joy, but sometimes it can make us believe that we are progressing, we are doing well, but actually slowly it's a way of covering up something. So it's important this three months that we look back into ourselves and see um, how we can uh, solidify our practice. Because the more you practice, actually the more... Uh, um, 
like it, uh, you become, you take things for granted and you, it deteriorates a little bit. So three months is to revive. And this is a, a very important aspect for all of us. And whether you're in a family, a couple, relationship, at work, any type of relationship, especially your loved one, things deteriorate and you hold a lot of things. So the beginning of Anku, the monks and nuns, we have a tradition of uh, moving rooms. And the Blue Cliff brothers had just come here, so we were, uh, we, uh, after our quarantine, we all found our rooms. And uh, we, I watched many brothers, uh, they uh, begin to create their an place of an cư, cư xá, no, gì? Xuất sĩ là gì? Không phải cư xá mà uh, tăng xá, tăng xá không phải là xuất xá. <cười> um, so it's a place where the monks uh, create a place, a dwelling place for themselves. And then when they move their rooms, you know, before the lay friends stay in there, they are guests. But when the monks' blue cliffs come, they are no guests. So the guest master was going crazy because uh, these are very special guests because they are all masters. <laughs> that means they know where everything is, you know, and they bring everything home and it's very joyful. I, I remember sitting over there and watching my brother uh, when we got out of quarantine, they, they kind of like, like uh, attacked Tang Sak or Dear Park Brothers <laughs> everywhere. And we have a few brothers who are uh, Deer Park brothers. And they know where everything is. It's their home. And slowly, like uh, squirrels, you know, they know where all the acorns are. So things come up, the plants. So, so over in the uh, refugee, five-star refugee camp, it's become uh, quite a beautiful place for us to anchor. So settling and creating a uh, space for yourself for the monks, and in each room, you create a place where you uh, can enjoy the morning, to enjoy some tea. So each brother have a different character. And this is beautiful tradition. When we move room and we settle in a new room, you know, you need to make it your home and you feel settled and you feel at ease there, comfortable. And this is uh, very important in uh, uh, in the Asian tradition, they, uh, they have a, a thing that blocks the, the, the wind. It's called uh, something bình. Bình phong, bình, bình phong, gì đó. Bình phong, right? Yeah. This, you know, Deer Park, you know, gatehouse, that uh, little hill there, is called Ngữ Bình. Ngữ Bình in, is a, a special place in uh, Hue. It also acts as the uh, place that blocks the wind from hitting the uh, Hue area. I think there's also uh, military, uh, had military aspect. <laughs> but a bin is a place that uh, a, a thing or a wall that blocks uh, the wind from coming in. Or here we can say the wind could represent um, disturbance makes you unsettled. So when you create your room, you create your space, we need to create it so we are not distracted. So Anku is to come back and find what has been distracting us. These things that uh, we've been paying attention to, the news media, the, uh, our, what is it, human drama, our uh, resentment with something, these things, they come and they keep pounding us. And so anchor to create a settlement is to fortify yourself, a place where you feel settled and you're less disturbed. And in that space of three months, if we can dwell there, we can have insight about ourselves and about the nature of the world, how things happen. 
when we are pulled away by the disturbance, the media, the news, which party, then it disturbs us and our mind is not very clear. So we cannot see the, the Dharma underneath, the Dharma impermanence, and the, you know, many truths about things. So we begin to rely on things, the news, what's next? So we rely on that, is not very stable. And so we create a, uh, uh, a space where it protects us. Mm, not that we run away from uh, society, but each one of us know that uh, there are times when we need to come back and take care of our roots, fortify our roots. Some of us uh, have the luxury, the privilege to do that. Some of us in society do not have that opportunity. But with the insight of interbeing, we do it for the world, and we do it not for our selfish self. And when we can offer to the world this energy, this stability, this non-fear. So coming back, Anku, is to create protection to create a home for yourself. The other day, uh, some of our lay friends who are also uh, anchor with us, they were digging uh, a, uh, uh, a hole where the septic tank is. And I remember when I first hear, was here in Deer Park, we placed those tanks in the lay uh, resident. Two huge, gigantic, big tank. They're like the size of a room and they have three compartments and they take care of our uh, septic. And they were digging the hole and uh, I thought it was the first time since 20 years maybe that they'd done it. But luckily he said, no, no, uh, I've come here and I've done it before. It's a lot of work because the rock of Deer Park, uh, once it's settled, the sand becomes like rock. So they dug out to, uh, uh, to the, 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 the cap, and the, soon the truck, I don't know, they've come, have they come pump it yet? They will soon come and pump it, just in case uh, we drink too much tea, the brothers. Yeah. So uh, they pump it ahead before the retreats, normally before the big retreat. But it made me reflect the... Uh, it, that also has to do with Anku. Uh, I was laying my hammock uh, and they were working. And it was quite enjoyable to watch. <laughs> I'm a lazy monk. And uh, I was reflecting that they were uh, preparing, uh, preparing space, preparing so that things don't get stuck. And that is also uh, Anku. Anku is also reflect on yourself. What are some things you, you can unstuck that has been you, following you around for nine months, one year? What is that? What can you suck out and go and you know, give it to the desert? This is also the spirit of Anku. To look into ourselves and to see what is it that we can unblock, untie? So throughout the year, we live with each other, we interact with each other, we watch the media, we know the news. So certain things get stuck in our mind about the person, about the other group, about this political figure, and they become, once you hear their name, you go, right? That is sludge that needs to be pumped. If I came up here and I had a t-shirt with a certain name on here, it would be very different. You would look at me and go, ooh, that is what you need to pump out. These ideas that we have based on names, labels, and things that we call mental formation. You know, get uh, internal knots. Mental formations, 
or things that form in our mind and a mental formation that causes tightness or like uh, too quick to react. We call those knots, internal knots, noi get. And anku is to fortify yourself, find a place of nourishment, settlement. You create a fortress so that the, the things that have been attacking you through the year cannot enter. You're in the Sangha, you're in your abode. And the other aspect of Anku spirit is to, you have three months to look, why do I react so quickly? Why do I have tightness when I see this person, see that color, hear that name, see those group of brothers? Why is it that one brother every time? And this is the work of uh, our practice. What we, three months we need to, and this is our task, and what we can offer to the situation now. People ask us, why aren't we going out there do, 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 and doing uh, social activism, kind of being involved with causes? Luckily, in our tradition, we have uh, brothers and sisters who take care of that. Other brothers take care of other things. But we all need it, whether it's taking care of uh, external action or internal action, keeping the monastery uh, alive and vibrant. So they need each other, internal, external. But both, whether you're internal, external, you need a break. And three months is a break, is not to, uh, and the break here is uh, uh, not to uh, let loose, but it's to fortify, to deepen our root. So remember that, huh? When you, we hike the mountain now, remember Guben, the gatehouse. So the image here that Thay this morning, last night we heard, like two uh, mountain here, and then behind us, Inte, and right there is Escondido. And right there is Nguben. Secret, huh? You can only see a little bit. And if you ever drive down there, that big road, what is it? The, the big, uh, the one that comes over here, I forget the name. And you can barely see what's up here. So that's why Deer Park is called the Great Hidden Mountain. And I remember when Thay uh, told me that name, he said, uh, don't forget, it's not Tiu Ang is Dai Ang. That means we don't hide from society, but Dai. Here you learn to fortify the treasure is hidden for people when they discover it, they can benefit. So it is not your running. And Thai got the name Ang from the word Escondido. In Spanish, it means to uh, uh, hide to retreat. And in the early days, I asked the, uh, some of the uh, Latino Mexican workers, and they say, yeah, you, you know, you see policia. You see policia, escondido, like that. So it means, uh, you know, you want to get trouble, you, you hide under the truck. <laughs> so it means hidden. Escondido means the hidden valley, uh, and you can see is uh, Escondido is a little secret little spot, and we are the hidden mountain of Escondido. So remember that this whole place is a reminder for us to always have a place that we can take refuge in. Don't be too. This three months, watch that. Mm, whatever it is that you find out about yourself, mm. you know, use that to reflect on whatever that habit is. So um, we'll listen to one sound where the Dakim is on the bell.
So as practitioners at home, you can uh, uh, use this. You've been living uh, at home, uh, you've been to the monastery, you learned some practice in your first retreat, but now it seems so far away. So you can follow us uh, for Anku, and maybe on the weekend, you can promise yourself on a Saturday or a Sunday to also Anku with us, knowing that there are many monasteries in France, in America, in Asia who are also practicing. And so I invite you in your own home to make that space. Recently, we had a retreat for, what kind of retreat? Oh, for the celebration of the 20 year anniversary of Deer Park. And I remember taking uh, care of one family, Dharma sharing family. And I shared with him that we all need to create the space for us where you can put your laptop, where you can watch a Dharma talk, where you can have something that can remind you of when you first came across the practice. So create a sp sacred space, your, your gu, mm, gu yi, gu sha, your gu sha, a place where you can really uh, settle. Just like us here in the monastery, we will do. And I believe we will also have uh, Dharma talks uh, live and streamed and recorded. And I believe uh, in Plum Village, uh, this winter retreat, they will be exploring the wisdom of non-discrimination, how to practice with when uh, others are discriminating and how to practice um, non-discrimination. So this is a kind of theme. And I think the brothers and sisters were looking into following that, uh, that exploration especially in our times now, when things are tightening up and become, becoming more polarized uh, or, you know, being part of a party or a group. Mm. So there's a tightening up on both sides, the left and the right. I hear that it's affected family members and intergenerational too. Like in the Vietnamese community, I hear that there's a, you know, the older generation, I read an article about older generation, um, subscribes themselves to a certain kind of view, and the younger generation a certain kind of view. Actually, me and my mom, we try to avoid that conversation. She's <laughs> and as well as my father, and many, uh, and it's wonderful, you see that the, uh, you know, you don't have to, you can have different views, but you learn mm, to be careful and sensitive so you don't make it a, uh, a, a place for conflict and you respect each other. I had to practice the 14 mindfulness training a lot when I was at home. And that's a, it's a, you know, you, you might uh, think that is the, you know, there's some benefit to that. So I invite you to do that. Create a place where you can uh, reflect with us the wisdom of non-discrimination for this three months. No matter what happens in two or three days, you stay focused on the three months. Don't let the phone, the wind of politics and the society disturb you. That is your challenge. To practice in a, such a way that you rely on that. No party can uh, uh, disturb us. Um, talk about the word party, uh, it stick with me with the story with Thai one time. Before going back to Vietnam, the, sec the third trip, I think. I forget which trip, but I think it was BBC, uh, Viet, Viet, BBC or something, in France, they, in Paris, uh, or UK, I forget. They had wanted to interview some of Thai students before Thai went to Vietnam. And we were like uh, scared because uh, I think Thai released something before the trip, and it already disturbed the Vietnamese uh, uh, 
a little bit stirring. So we were quite nervous. I said, Thai, you know, uh, and they wanted the student, because they know already Thai's view, but they wanted to, you know, it's me, Phap Kao, Hing Yim, and one more sister. So we had to go and uh, uh, talk, uh, talk to them on the radio station. But we were too nervous, so we went to Thai, the four of us, and we asked Thai, can you uh, give us some advice just in case they ask us like, you know, political question because we are, <laughs> you know, we've been, we grew up in Plum Village, you know, we don't know very much uh, about the, the sensitive stuff in Vietnam. And I remember Thai listened to Sister Hingi and I shared a little bit and I think like, I was just sitting there and, and then uh, Thai took a while to answer and he said, Thai, trust you. You speak what you have uh, in your mind. Just share the simple thing. Thai does not have a politic, uh, a party line. We do, oh, he said, we do not have a, Plum Village does not have a party line. That's the first time I hear Thai say something like that. You see, because we were like scared with politics. And Thai said, Plum Village, we don't have a party line. Meaning, Thay does not want us to share his, just his viewpoint. We have to rely on our practice and share from our space, whatever we share. So Thay doesn't want, to be, uh, want us to be his puppet. That was like, wow. After that, I was like, you know, you know this is really my teacher. The Plum Village does not have a party line. That's the only time I ever hear Thai say party line. You know, party line is a very uh, political uh, mm, terminology. And to see your teacher use it in that context, it woke me up. And that's why I, now I'm very sensitive to when we come up with policies that relate to society and views and, you know, like abortion or gay or you know, rights and things. And we've got to be very careful because they can uh, all of a sudden block us and we become a party and that will break our precept. And the monastic precept, we're not uh, allowed to be a p partisan, right? We actually have to be uh, uh, trans-partisan. We transcend the party and the terminology. So for us to practice non-discrimination, non-party, uh, non-party something, yeah. I want to also share that uh, um, Thai, uh, his whole life, he's focused on community, on Sangha. And it's a very uh, uh, difficult, uh, um, I guess, medicine for our time because we've all grown up so individualistic. And not just in the West and outside of Vietnam, but also in Vietnam. So it's not East and West anymore, but it's just a kind of modern mentality. We have a tendency to hold on to ourselves our views, our habits, our way. Brothers and sisters we get along with, those we don't. So this is, uh, made me reflect a lot on what is happening in society. And we think it's politician and it's political. But in, in fact, we also do that within ourselves. We are also politician. So we look at other people and we think, oh, you know, you know, they present certain thing, but they're not really like that. And we do that very subtly. We are very good politician. In front of certain people, we say this, and the other people in a big meeting, we're quiet because it's politically probably more appropriate. And then outside of the meeting, we, we have uh, lobbying. So we do the same thing. We have parties, many parties in the Sangha, in our, at home as well. 
in front of your father, you're like that. And among your sister, you know, you're like that. So don't think that politician is a external, oh, those are the ones, blue and red. We also have black, blue, brown, yellow, and we are all politicians. And if you're not mindful, you will not see the subtlety of our mind. Very, very uh, certain people, we, we present ourselves. We want to present ourselves according to what we think they think of us. And so in the Sangha, our way of behaving, our habits, very strong. And Sangha here also includes the family. I apologize, speaking, I'm speaking mostly with all the brothers and sisters, the monks and nuns who are anku, but when I say Sangha or practitioner, I mean it for homes, couples, it applies to everything. So this three months, we need to identify what kind of politician am I. You have to accept that you are a politician first. Don't think, oh, I am a practitioner, I am a monk. But actually, the habit of a politician is also a, 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 a human aspect. We want people to like us, we don't like to be hate. We usually avoid uh, reprimanding somebody because they will no longer support us. You know, it's like, uh, you know, that's very, very tricky. <laughs> so anyway, this is something for us to explore. I invite you. And it comes back to Sangha, why Thay has emphasized so much on Sangha. Because there's certain things we do not see about ourselves. And we also need our brothers and sisters. We are very good to lập uh, la I don't know how to translate that. You know, lập doom is lập uh, doom. What is doom? Anyway, it, I love that word because I hear it, but I know it means like lập doom. It's like, this is lập doom. <laughs> right? You, uh, hmm? My, my, my stand? Oh, my standing. I have a stand on that, like a platform. Yeah, so you, uh, you know, we, we, we all have that and we have to be careful because it can exclude others. And this is something uh, uh, I've been watching to see how much of a politician I am. And when I was at home, I was like that. I was my, with my father and I was very skillful to do certain things. And uh, yeah, it's just a koan for you. Don't think that the politician is outside of you. Mm. We are also that one politician that side and that one too. We are not just one side, huh? They actually, they both behave the same way. They just wear different colors. So in the Sangha, we, uh, we uh, have many, can, uh, we rely. So taking refuge in the Sangha is a kind of, mm, a very beautiful, uh, almost like a new way for, not a new way, but it's really emphasized in the Plum Village tradition because it's difficult. And if we can live among our brothers and sisters who have different views, who are from a different political viewpoint, meaning policy, they have different rules, different regulation different, so I don't mean political as in politics, but different uh, viewpoints. And if you can live among your brothers and sisters who are different from you, who ascribe to different things, then you're a little happier, hopefully. Yeah? So it's a training. And it's also difficult because the Sangha sees things about you that you don't want to look at. So the hardest thing for a practitioner is to live among brothers and sisters who know you. This is uh, uh, I, my 20 years being in Sangha. That is the most difficult thing. Because first, you don't accept it. You say, they don't understand me. 
and two, you, uh, yeah, you begin to uh, uh, create a group out of them and then you become isolated. And if you don't release that, it's very difficult. Uh, Sometimes I call it the, the rubbing, the crucible. And it, it, why is it why does Thai emphasize that? Because it's the medicine for our time of individuality, separation, views. You see? What are the things that move a newspaper and the news? Individual. Not following the, the, the human uh, uh, guidelines, right? Breaking precepts. You know, tempting, craving. And these are all driven by an individual way of uh, education, training, culture. So that's why I see, and that's why I feel so committed to remain in the Sangha. There's a Sangha, we have the, the Bin Phong. And then internally, we learn to get rid of the septic stuff from our tank, from our head, empty, unpump your septic this winter. And the third is to rely on the Sangha. You follow the Sangha, you do what the Sangha does, you become like a novice monk or a novice nun. The longer you practice, the more septic you have. And if you don't pump your septic, sorry, this is not very hygienic, but uh, <laughs> I like some essence, okay? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but I, I think Vietnamese culture, you're not supposed to speak about the septic stuff, you know? No, hoi quá. Con xin lỗi. Whoever translate, translate the right perfume word, okay? <laughs> and the, so the three refuge, huh? fortify, put yourself uh, in traditionally in uh, Buddhist uh, tradition, they call it protect your six senses to create a, a place to watch where your eyes are in. And the other is to look inside to see what septic, what kind of habits of thinking habits of sleep, eating, what are you attached to, what are your addictions, coffee, chocolate, megai, internet, what certain sites you can't resist, you are unsettled if you don't go to it. That is septic, because what it does, you it lose your freedom, it makes you lose your freedom. Every time you go to it, it becomes stronger. You have a tendency to hide is also septic. You have a tendency to avoid a certain brother or sister or a certain group or certain things is also septic. It lo you lose your freedom or you're attached to a certain brother or sister is also septic. So in a Sangha, we can watch this. And being among the Sangha, we... Uh, we Will, it protects us, and we also uh, get nourished by it. You don't need to worry about safety because there's many brothers, the coyotes will eat before you, right? <laughs> we were just in the mountain. We were joking about <laughs> where to sleep so the coyotes will eat uh, the brother outside first. Yeah? <laughs> um, that's where it came from, sorry. Um, but you know the birds, you know, they, they, the group of birds or bees, they, they fly together and they protect themselves. And this is what I've learned uh, being in the Sangha. Worst case, you're not doing well, you practice terrible, you just follow the Sangha. The Sangha go to sitting, you go. You don't need to try to mm, just, and that becomes your habit. So yourself, you like, don't like, preference, no preference. You rely on the Sangha. And this is, uh, uh, for me, what has uh, kept me uh, not just alive in the Sangha, but also enjoy and cherish 
and also want to develop it. I share this with a lot of my younger brothers here in Deer Park, who are uh, yeah, very lovely, uh, very dedicated. And I see that uh, please don't miss this opportunity for this three months to uh, fortify yourself and en enrich yourself. There's one practice that uh, uh, I learned when I was uh, studying um, um, uh, Master uh, Tang Hoi. We were looking last year into the different uh, uh, ancestral teacher in our lineage that Thay has uh, taught us. And we're bringing that out to English. So um, mm, there's a teaching in the Diamond Sutra that is mentioned, the, and this is the beautiful uh, refuge, and this can uh, enlighten us a little bit on the deeper refuge. And in Vietnamese, it's called Ng Vô Sở Tu. Ng Vô Sở Tu Như Xin Kỳ Tâm. That is like, you need to remember that. If you take in Vietnamese, try to learn that line. It's uh, Sino Vietnamese. But ưng um means uh, should. Vô sở is the place, the non-local, the place uh, that is, there's no place like there. Vô sở, vô is no, sở is place, no place. Or in neuroscience or quantum science is non-local. Tu is to dwell, to take refuge in. So take refuge in the place that that is not a place so there's nothing to rely on so where is that place it's so cool man it's like the the because we always look for refuge right even the dharma and so this is a, a teaching that uh, uh, we can uh, also practice to find where is that place? Where can I grab it? What is it that I can rely on? So in this time right now, we, we invest so much on external things. Oh, when this party wins, things will be great. And you ask yourself, is that really going to be like that? If your party, the one you voted for, wins, everything will be okay. So we, we uh, you know, all the watering, the, the you know, uh, uh, make you believe that, oh, if this happens, left or right, then things will be great. Well, actually, if it, the other one happens, and everything will be terrible. So you take refuge in that because we've been con constantly playing that, uh, what is it, the, uh, the, the cycle, the cycle, the vicious cycle. And it makes us believe on that and then we rely on it. So the place of, um, that we can, the, the non-local, I translate it as one should take refuge in the non-local or one should take refuge not in any place or anything or anybody. At first, you can rely on, on a teacher, you can rely on a monk, a nun, rely on a friend, but if they become a reliance that you cannot let go, then you uh, uh, have uh, basically enslave yourself. So what a teacher can do, what a sangha can do, what the dharma can do is to help you touch the place that is most reliable, which is an internal place. And the word nyu sin ki tam translated is like our mind of bodhi. Tam here is our mind. 
Gitam is like the, the, the mind that is uh, like the bodhi, the awakened mind, the mind of love and understanding must be born. Sin is born, must arise from this place. That is bodhicitta. That is your aspiration. That is what drives you, what brings you meaning. And is that is what uh, you can rely on. So it needs to come from within. And it does not rely on any place, any person, any party, any group of people, any identity. These letters, you know. Uh, so don't let, don't uh, uh, just identify yourself. I am a type, I am, you know, whatever, uh, from this gender or that gender. So you begin to rely too much on labels, and we start to label other people. And this becomes a hamper. What the, in the teaching we call just convention. It just ways to help us, like the women in uh, men's bathroom, they're just convention. Don't let it become your disturbance. Where is the one in between? How come there, you know, and then be, you just, the purpose is to go to the bathroom, is not the sign on the door. So go use the bush, you know, is a, of course, there is some uh, sensitivity, some people uh, need some that, uh, you know, we need to be skillful, but what I share with you here is don't let the signs, the symbols, the party become your de de re 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 reliance. This is the deeper meaning of the Dharma. And sometimes we call that the, uh, the nature of signlessness. Don't get caught in the signs, in the colors, in the symbol. They are just conventions. Of course, we have young people's retreat, we have old people retreat, we have retreat for uh, LGBTQ, XT, something, right? We have retreat for uh, uh, people of color, we have retreat for veterans. Maybe one day we have retreat for uh, uh, a liberal, you know, like a conservative. How about we have a retreat for all oh, the conservative and see what that looks like? Because there's an assumption that everyone who's a meditator, practitioner, are all like, uh, you know, guacamole liberals. What is it for Lou say? Uh, something like, avocado liberals or something like that. I forget what you call them, but they know how to eat avocado on toast. I was, these are labels, you know. Uh, he told me recently there was an article mm, identifying which side eats what dish. And you read the article like that, it's easy to get uh, influenced by that. So there are ways uh, that we define ourselves and define each other. And the Dharma here is to practice so you can see beyond that, the signlessness of it. So at first we take refuge in the Buddha you know, the three refuges, the Thai has three parts. Usually it's just one section with uh, three jewels, right? Taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. But Thai added three, two more stanza. The second stanza is dwelling in the refuge of the Buddha, dwelling in the refuge of the Dharma. So it brings it to the present moment within this space, in this dwelling. And the third stanza is to taking refuge in the Buddha within myself, the Dharma within myself, the Sangha within myself. So at first it's helpful to take refuge in Thai, to take refuge in the Buddha, to chant their name, to read the books, but those things help us touch the signless Buddha, the signless Thai, 
So you always ask us, they always ask me, a lot of people ask me, and say, what happens when Thai passes? They always say that, you know. People, uh, especially a certain kind of, uh, from a certain tradition, mm. they always look for a continuation. And they look for like the next monk or nun to continue. This is a way, uh, this is a way of training uh, a certain culture. But we're not able to touch Thai within us. What is Thai has been teaching, that is our teacher. So when we breathe and we look, sometimes we look uh, at a cushion that the monks and nuns put to represent Thai. And we need to move and behave and keep awareness that Thai is present. That is the practice. So when you remember, all of a sudden you have access, you plug into the presence of that energy. That is the signless time. But when you forget, then you, you know, you, you behave a certain way, you know? I remember when Thai uh, here in Plum Village is like, uh, it's very clear when he enters a room, everything changes. And one morning, lazy morning, uh, the brothers, uh, we go hiking early, five o'clock, we pack, and we go down this road and tie over where the sisters, uh, that road there, the fire road, they call it. And we were walking down and Thai had this uh, little bird that every time you press the bird, it goes, chit, 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 chit. And so uh, we were like going down, there was a bunch of us, and we were like, oh talking, walking, and like coyotes, you know? And Thai, right where the bush is, he went, choo, 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 and we already know that sound. I mean, I mean, you've never seen brothers and sisters stop so quickly. <laughs> and we saw the flashlight going, and everyone moved to the side, and we started walking slowly, and Thai didn't say a word. And then, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we're walking and we know that Thai can hear our voice. So we were walking very mindfully until we hit clarity and then <laughs> up the hill again. You know, so Thai, you know, Thai has a presence, you know. And so there is clearly uh, an energy. And what spiritual practice, spirituality or whatever you call it, mm, is the practice is to remember, and which is actually another word for mindfulness. Or sometimes you say uh, forgetfulness, right? Is the opposite of mindfulness. Meaning forgetfulness is the opposite of remembering. So everything you've learned, do you still remember? The first retreat that you went to or are you now a Dharma teacher, an OI member? Now you're in charge of the CTC and you know how things are done. Those become septic stuff because it, it is an identity, is a, uh, mm, a, a view about yourself that this is all, oh, this is just for beginning practitioner. I don't need to go to sitting, I don't need to go to walking. Mm -hmm. Or walking and talking, that's just for beginners. That's a very difficult practice. I know one young brother, when we were in Bird Mountain, we were all sharing like what we want to practice three months. He shared, I hope I can practice walking without talking. And I shared with him, then you need to walk far from your friends. <laughs> Because uh, to practice that in the Sangha, you, you get made fun of, you know. If you walk and don't talk, the brothers, some brothers will say, come on, don't be so caught up in the form. <laughs> you, you've grown up now. <laughs> it's just an excuse because they can't practice it. So my practice is to support that brother, right? I'm not going to practice that yet. <laughs> 
I will try, but it's a very honorable, uh, I remember making that promise. It's so hard, because there's something about it that uh, uh, we think is unnatural. But if you walk next to Thai, I dare you to speak. <laughs> Why is that? What is spiritual practice but that, to remember that you walk with your teacher? Oh man, this is scary stuff because I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> I open the lid and the, uh, um, you cannot close it. <laughs> but uh, I encourage every one of us to come back to our original, when we first came across the Dharma, whatever that is for you, uh, don't let uh, uh, someone uh, be your master. So that place of that, you, uh, that you can't rely on is internal. And only you know what you do in your room when it's dark. Only you know what to do, what you're doing in the bathroom when no one sees. So this is something is, uh, long, uh, it, that makes your, your spiritual practice uh, last is the things that are not seen, the signless. That is uh, uh, one of the uh, secret is to uh, don't share about it, keep it for yourself. Is the hidden mountain. And for me, that's uh, very important as a practitioner, that we uh, uh, don't rely on outer form too much. Outer, outer exp, uh, appearances too much. But walking without talking helps. Yeah? So uh, don't be too quick to get rid of all the forms and all your refuge. In the beginning, you take refuge in your mentor, your elder brother, your sangha, Thai, the books. But those things, as you take refuge, they should fortify that place of Bo Tu, the non-local refuge. And that means it's, it, it, it's, it can't be found anywhere. That means it's there. So every time you come back to the present moment, remember that, that there is that place and it is with you, it is the bodhicitta, it is your mind of understanding, mind of love, and we all have that. Even those who we think are not practicing. So we come support each other, so we remind each other that every one of us, no matter where we're at now, we might be stuck, our septic sink is half full, uh, overloaded, and we help each other um, to uh, um, what is it, revive, renew ourselves. So that is the true refuge, the most reliable. So this is the deepest teaching. So know, know where you're at, okay? You know. Um, but they all, the teaching, the Dharma, should help you touch that. Don't rely too much on... Uh, so the three months, watch what you grasp for and what you hold on to tight. It might you need to release... If you take refuge too much on somebody, you have to recognize what is it that they're offering you that you cannot have yourself. And this is a, a longer lasting because when that brother, when that sister, when you are on your own and have to go home and take care of your parents, when Thai is no longer around, when the thing that you rely on is no longer around, you are, un, you are not unsettled. You are still anku. That is the how to practice. Anku throughout, uh, mm, the, uh, throughout the year and any place. And it is a challenge. It is a training. It is not something that you can perfect. Um, we are uh, part-time part practitioners sometimes part-time Buddhas, yeah? And this is uh, uh, very forgiving. 
but please uh, do not be too uh, good of a politician. Sometimes you need to be a little bit more uh, honest to yourself and ask for help. Ask your roommate to, to share with him that you want to practice this. And when you voice it, this is what uh, uh, taking face to face is. You take refuge in the Sangha and actually it would be nice if we, in our mentor and mentee group, uh, we can all share that. What we would like our brothers and sisters to support us on in this three months retreat. What are something we want to work on? To untie, to fortify more, and to uh, uh, take refuge more, yeah? Untie, unseptic, yeah? And we all have it, you know? I have to be truthful, you know? It's like there's, n you know, nobody can escape those uh, things. We, it's part of the compost and flower, you know? That's why I love Thai's uh, teaching, because it's mud and lotus. It's not like we practice so that there will be only lotus. And Thai said, don't throw your compost away. Pump it out and then leave it out in the sun and then it become good uh, manure. So there's nothing bad about it, but you have to know where and why they have formed the stuff in your tank. And this is the uh, value of having uh, the Sangha. Uh, we can support each other. So we wish you a wonderful uh, uh, next uh, month, two months, three months, and forever. It's not in a couple of days. And when you hear this, please uh, let go of that idea that everything will be okay if this happens. Or let go of the idea everything will be so awful if this happens. This is the virus that is going through right now. So you need to reestablish yourself, make your home, and follow the monks and nuns for these three months. And you will uh, uh, follow us online, participate, build that uh, uh, anchor place for yourself. And yeah, it's, you know, it's uh, like a poof of it. Plush uh, air, and uh, this is the place, uh, and that is the truth of the Dharma: impermanence, interconnection, and uh, we know what is more solid, more reliable. And so we wish you uh, happy practice for everyone, whether you're here in Deer Park, um, at home, uh, with your new corner, your room, your breathing room, and within your online sangha that you uh, create a rhythm, space and schedule. Remember that. Monastery, it's about space, schedule. Do, 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 like that. And you, things will cook. Things will cook. So we wish you uh, to do that. Mm, create a schedule for yourself every weekend or every evening sometime to go online with your brothers and sisters. So happy practice, peaceful practice, and uh, lots of fruits. Thank you for listening and joining our Sangha.